I'm gonna drink beer and talk about ProRes Raw. This is Fix It and Post. So I'm out here in uh, Malibu, California at a private residence testing out my FS7 and Shogun shooting ProRes Raw. I either did really well or I got my ass kicked. Let's find out. All right, so I shot my first ProRes Raw video. Uh, this is pretty exciting for me. I was really excited when I first heard about ProRes Raw. I'm sure you've heard about most of the specs of it at this point, so I'm just gonna get right into the nuts and bolts and talk about actually going out, shooting ProRes Raw, editing a ProRes Raw, and then exhibiting that video. I'll show you the video now. doesn't love it. 60 seconds, girls smoking pot on the beach in Malibu. It was a great opportunity while these photographers took pictures to go out there, shoot some BTS footage, and really see the capabilities of what was possible with my FS7, a Shogun Inferno, and this new codec called ProRes RAW. I guess the first thing that we should talk about that's probably the most important is cost. Because the cost of shooting ProRes RAW on the FS7 about doubles the cost of the camera it requires a huge list of additional components that just expands your base that you need. That list includes V-mount batteries, cables, the Shogun Inferno, hard drives, you need a computer, you need cases, your, your load doubles in size, uh, you need rigs and support, adapters, you need Final Cut Pro. And I mean, just to exemplify that, this is a DTAP cable for the Shogun Inferno uh, to come off your V-mount battery, and it's $65, uh, not including shipping or tax and that's just to power it without batteries because you need two huge batteries to run it um, and it's not even made well. This has no grip, it falls out and if you don't have a cage for your Shogun Inferno, it's, it's not even a good product. On top of the hard drives and all the other material that you need to go with it, shooting ProRes RAW is also extremely difficult. All right, so I spent the day shooting ProRes RAW and uh, it was complicated, frustrating, and I have no idea what I captured. So I either got some great stuff or I have nothing at all. So after the shoot, I got back and started to ingest the footage. And I guess the first thing that I really noticed after shooting ProRes raw footage was that what I was sold on how fast your computer can process it and that you can use an old laptop wasn't as accurate and as positive as it came out to be, at least in my situation. Uh, the processing for the footage that I shot, which filled up about a terabyte from the camera uh, onto the Shogun Inferno recorder, took about eight hours to transcode. And I didn't even transcode it, just in process the footage and, and for the program to just be able to read it. Uh, and that was after switching over into the wide gamut section of Final Cut. So um, it took a long time to process. The second thing I noticed immediately right off the bat was that I overexposed all of my shots. Um, you know, what I was seeing on the recorder was not what my camera was or the Shogun's internal memory was recording. I, it showed me that in my waveform monitors, and I was like, that doesn't look right, but I'm going to keep shooting because my monitor is showing me something that looks beautiful, especially when I was in Atom HDR mode. So as I noticed, all my shots were overexposed, and that's because I was relying on what I was seeing in the monitor, and obviously you should never do that. So it was another stark reminder to make sure that you monitor your, whether it's your histogram or your waveform monitors, whatever you're using to, to, to check out your scopes, trust your scopes. Because my scopes were like, hey, all this stuff is totally blown out, and I'll show you that here in a second. Um, and well, at the same time, I was looking at a monitor, and again, especially in, in the uh, Atom HDR mode where it was like, damn, that's an awesome image uh, coming through on this monitor. But then I got back to post, and this is what I found. So uh, if we close this and close this. 
if we just start going through the footage, uh, and this does have the log conversion on, so um, the first thing you're going to notice is that if you go over here to information, that it does have these things turned on. So if I turn this off and I turn this off, that is the true log image right there. Um, and maybe that's not the most flattering thing to do. Um, and you'll see <clears throat> in general that most of my shots are wildly overexposed. My interiors are okay, but uh, in general, like look at this one, there is no data here. Uh, but as I'm sure you guys have seen in other videos, I'll just drag it down to the end of this edit. If I bring a section of this in here, and I was like, oh boy, I messed up the entire shoot. And you can see um, if I go right into color, if I go up to, uh, let's just go to Luma. I mean, it's totally peaked out, but then I can just bring that. Oh, I didn't see that's an interior shot. I didn't even know it. Um, and so then there's the interior and then I can drag down the shadows and bring up the highlights bring up my mid-tones, and that entire shot is saved. So, uh, I guess that because I messed up, didn't matter, because I was able to pull the footage back. Um, it taught me to, again, rely on my scopes, and uh, to make sure that I need to understand how to color footage better as well, because automatically applying these um, auto LUTs that are in Final Cut Pro when you do the the, log, the raw to log conversion and then the log to, to LUT conversion, um, things can go all kinds of different directions. So you need to know what you're doing. Uh, in general, uh, I was pretty impressed with it. I, I mean, here, I mean, this is my 2015 iMac with an i7, 32 gigabytes of RAM, and I have nothing running right now. Let me close, except of course, uh, the background window. <clears throat> and that has some effects that has color correction that has all those different things. And it is, it's, and now that everything's running, it's rendering and running smoothly and flawlessly within the program, um, which is super nice. Um, so yeah, I mean, again, look at you can look at this shot with what I got. Oh, daughter's upset. And then this is what I managed to bring back. Everything's there. There's there's no detail that isn't there. And oh, this is obviously a drone shot. That was not the FS7. And that is with a different lot applied. Uh, if you look, I, I did play with these here. This shot and this shot, I tried to play with some different LUTs. And it's much more complicated to get the right color and stuff like that. But um, in general, you definitely have that option. So it's... Uh, it's pretty amazing. You know, it took a long time to get all the gear together, to get uh, the camera, to understand it. It took you know, half an hour of that shooting that day to realize what wasn't even the right format, and then to switch it over, and then the processing time. Uh, it's expensive, um, but if it's able to, you know, it, it already is. I mean, I, I, I haven't shot RAW on the FS7 yet, but I've shot the ProRes RAW because I know that my system can handle that. I'm lining up some shoots here pretty soon that I'm going to shoot uh, some narrative stuff on RAW, but I haven't found an, uh, a need to do that, and I need to buy a whole bunch of more hard drive space at the same time. So conclusions is I'm definitely going to use ProRes RAW when I have end-to-end -end control of a project. Um, it, you know, there was another show that I just worked on, a, a reality television show, nine-episode series, and uh, the option to shoot over log in ProRes was in my mind. Um, you know, I was like, hey, we could shoot this in ProRes. We would have raw, you know, ProRes raw, uh, have that functionality of raw, have a really awesome image. Uh, and because what I, I want to always be able to deliver is 4K HDR. That's the future of television. That's the future of everything. And, and if you want to make a movie and sell it to Netflix, then you definitely have to get into 4K HDR, understanding what that is, how it works, and how to capture it. And the FS7 is definitely one of the cameras capable of delivering 4K HDR images, which is on the Netflix list. 
Um, and so it's a, a very powerful combination. It's expensive, it's difficult to get there. Uh, the hardest one to crack is that, that first seven and a half thousand dollars for the Mark I uh, or the nine thousand plus for the Mark II. Um, I don't, you know, I don't see the value of the Mark II yet. Uh, I, I was down at the Sony Center getting one of the cameras fixed and I talked to him about upgrading for the Rec 2020 color space from the Mark I and they were like, yeah, that's pretty much just a software upgrade. So I imagine it'll definitely come out once Rec 2020 color space becomes much more common um, and, and needed. And so, uh, yeah, either way, this, uh, this was uh, an interesting test for me. I really enjoyed getting out there and shooting in ProRes RAW. It's uh, an exciting new codec. And since I already owned the FS7 up front, um, it was when, they, when, when I saw the first video, I was like, wait a minute. I think, I think my camera can do that. I think that is my, and I was very excited. And so to come all around from the beginning when I first heard about ProRes RAW to having a, you know, a completed ProRes RAW video now, um, I'm very excited to get out there and shoot more content with it, especially narrative based stuff. So talking with people around town, post houses uh, on other projects and talking with producers about shooting projects in ProRes RAW, as of right now, it's not a commercially viable codec it's, or format, however you want to call it. Reason being is because most people, especially in this town in Hollywood, don't run Final Cut Pro, and it is still looked at as a redheaded bastard child. Nobody understands it, they don't like it, um, which is a huge disadvantage, I feel like, for the industry. I love Final Cut, it is absolutely my favorite NLE. Uh, once you understand, I've been in it since beta, and, and I will never edit in anything else if I don't absolutely have to. So, um, you know, but getting a client to request a video in ProRes RAW right now isn't worth it. Again, if you're running an end-to-end -end project where you're shooting it and editing it and you're a Final Cut operator already, then this is the bee's knees for you. If you already own an FS7 and you just need to get the Shogun Inferno and you're wondering, should you do it? Absolutely, don't limit yourself. This is something that only eight cameras in the world have. So spend the extra money. If, you know, the point of the FS7, I believe, is to be a modular camera, and I'm very excited to have the ability to expand it with relatively expensive, but decently priced expansion units uh, that enable different things. So, that's my ProRes RAW video. I appreciate your time. Cheers. If you want to check out my most recent film, Mile Marker, which is about veterans and PTSD and cannabis, uh, I'll play the trailer right now. It's available on iTunes and Amazon and a bunch of other VOD outlets. So check it out. Thanks for watching my video. Peace out. Forty veterans may have died while on a secret waiting list for primary care appointments at a Phoenix VA. The problem has been consistent for decades. I was one of those veterans that got put on the secret waiting list. Forty United States veterans have died while waiting for medical appointments. And it's only getting worse, not better. 1,892 flags were planted on the National Mall to represent the number of veterans that committed suicide. I told them I'm going to be number 23. And the guy pointed to the door and said, half the people in the waiting room feel the same way. And as the wars rage on, what happens with our disregarded equipment? Tomorrow hitting the road for a 7,000 mile journey over three and a half weeks, give or take a few days. Join me as I drive across the United States to check in with my battle buddies 15 years after our deployments into Afghanistan and Iraq. This is our story. We don't know with any sufficient precision who's going to develop PTSD. We had seven men die and eight men injured. Took a turret shield to the face. I would uh, identify enemy KIA. You know, I was shooting $200 a day of heroin. 
and just stuck the gun to the back of his ear and pulled the trigger.